Hi, uh, this is lecture number 24 on uh, drip irrigation design. So, we have seen uh, some uh, design aspects in the previous lecture. Uh, we are going to uh, design a drip irrigation system for a known crop in this lecture. So, combining uh, you know the number of uh, emitters uh, for a uh, required for the application rate and uh, covering the entire uh, given area and for a particular crop and also number of laterals, number of uh, uh, you know sub mains or manifold and the main design. So, then uh, the pump design so uh, and pump power calculation. So, so we will start with uh, the emitter uh, you know specifications and design and uh, finally, we end up with the uh, power required for a pump to operate. Uh, to maintain the pressure and to uh, to uh, meet the desired discharge at the uh, each dripper. So here in this example, if you see clearly, so the design a drip irrigation system uh, for the following uh, data. So the get data is given here. Uh, okay, so the crop is uh, banana, and uh, the spacing. Uh, that is 1.5 meter and 1.35 meter. This is the spacing between uh, you know, the, the crop, uh, uh, plant to plant spacing and the road to road spacing. Then area of the land is 1 hectare. So, that is uh, let us consider it is uh, the square land. So, the 100 meter uh, length and 100 meter width and slope is 0 0.3 to 0 0.45. So, uh, you can take the average value at 0 0.35 percent in this. And uh, uh, water source is from well and static head is 10 meters. So, that means, so the pump is extracting water from the source at uh, uh, 10 meter distance uh, down the surface and pan evaporation uh, 12 mm per day. So, every day around 12 mm is being evaporated from the, the surface. So, and then the soil characteristics here. So, the soil is clay soil. Uh, field capacity is 48 percent and wilting point uh, uh, 25 percent. So, so with this you can estimate the available uh, storage or available moisture content for, for the clay soil. So, this is simply the difference between field capacity and uh, wilting point. So, that that is the available moisture content and then uh, uh, bulk density is given 1.3 gram per centimeter cube and effective root zone depth 60 centimeter. The wetted area is 60 percent. Suppose you are uh, you are irrigating. Uh, I mean, so here it is one dripper, second dripper, third dripper, fourth dripper. Okay. Uh, so the effective wetted area. So that means it is not effectively irrigating the entire piece of land 100 percent, right? So you are saying 60 percent is wetted. Okay, 60 percent is of this land. So, that means, so each dripper will have a wetting area of 60 percent. Okay. Each drip, dripper effectively uh, wets 60 percent of the land. So, and the maximum pump discharge is 2.5 uh, liter per second. So, this is the data given. Uh, so, here in the rough sketch what we do uh, based on the given area. So, we divide the entire uh, field into like 100 meter length and uh, 100 meter width. Okay. So, and then so let us uh, plan. So, let us have the well at this point right and this is the main line and then uh, the main line goes all the way from here to here. Right, this is all main line. Okay. So, then let us let us have uh, let us go into the details. Okay. So, then the next thing is so, so in this let us consider the whole field into a square field having 100 meter by 100 meter. Okay. So, let us go to the first step number 1 in this. So, the design steps here the calculation of depth of irrigation. So, the first thing is since E t uh, since uh, evaporation if pan evaporation is given E p right. So, that is pan evaporation if you if you multiply with the uh, pan coefficients you will get the uh, E t 0 
okay. and then multiplied by uh, crop coefficient you get ETC evapotranspiration crop evapotranspiration. Okay. So, here E p is given 12 mm per day and let us uh, say K p that is the uh, pan coefficient is a 0 0.7 and K c for um, this particular crop is uh, 1 let us say 1. Okay. So, sorry. Uh, so with this, you get uh, you get what is there? Okay. Okay. So with this, you get okay. So evapo crop evapo transpiration at eight point four mm per day. So that means every day 8.4 mm is being uh, you know evaporated from the both soil as well as the crop surface. So, that is ETC. So, that means the crop water demand. So, the crop requires 8.4 mm per day right every day. So, the volume of water. So, what we have to do in the drip through drip irrigation you have to replenish that amount like uh, uh, I mean so that uh, you have to meet the irrigation demand. So, the uh, volume of water to be applied. So, that is the volume is equal to area into depth right. So, here area so what we do. So, here we are targeting one dripper. So, what is the volume of water required at individual plant okay, at individual plant. So, let us say uh, there is a dripper here. So, we are find we are trying to find the discharge at that particular point. So, the area here is so we are we are targeting like each dripper the effective area for each dripper. So, if you are considering uh, this dripper so half of this half of this and half of this distance and half of this distance. So, this is almost a square right the similar to uh, the square. So, this will have like you know 1.5 1.35. So, this is the area we are talking about. Okay. So, as I said there are 4 points right the 4 points are drippers, but effective dripper for this will be half of this distance half of this distance half of this distance. So, this is your effective area covered by the particular dripper it is one dripper. So, but this is only 60 percent is wetted. So, uh, you have the area and 60 percent is uh, is uh, uh, wetted and then 8.4 is the depth you need to apply right I mean uh, that is being taken out from the particular area. So, so around 10 about 10.21 meter cube you have to add every day at each dripper ok. And then the number of emitters per plant you so, say how many num uh, how many emitters are required in order to release or deliver this much amount of water. So, number of emitters per plant is to be selected based on the layout. So, say 1 emitter per plant. So, we let us let us say 1 emitter per plant. So, in this case of a banana crop. So, there is a 4 liter per hour capacity. So, we take uh, in the previous lecture we have seen the drippers of uh, the capacity like 2 LPH, 4 LPH, 8 LPH. So, let us consider 4 LPH capacity dripper and one dripper for each plant. So, the irrigation time now the number of uh, emitters per plant is 1 1 with uh, 1 liter per hour. Okay. So, then the irrigation time. So, if uh, a dripper can you know deliver 4 liter per hour and you have you require 10.21 meter cube. So, how long it is going to take to operate? So, that will be like volume. So, this is the volume ok so, sorry. So, the volume divided by discharge rate ok. So, volume is 10.21 and discharge rate is sorry the discharge rate is 4. So, here because the discharge rate of uh, the dripper is 4 liter per hour. So, if you divide this you get 2.55 hour and you can uh, say 2.5 hour. So, each dripper has to be operated uh, 2.5 hours ok. So, so that uh, you can deliver 10.21 meter cube for particular plant. 
So, then uh, so this is irrigation time. So, each dripper needs to be operated at 2.5 hours and the number of emitters per lateral. So, here if you see the laterals uh, the length length of the field is 100 meter right. So, length of the field is 100 meters. Let us assume uh, the main is going uh, exactly half of the field. So, it is going like uh, so here 50 meter uh, going through the 50 meter field. So, about it is making half of the field ok. So, length of the field let us say 100 meter right. So, uh, and then we are going to choose half of the field to lay the laterals ok. So, let us go to the next slide. Oh, sorry. So, the next slide you clearly see here the sub, uh, sub main is laid at this center ok. This is a sub main laid at center hence uh, lateral length is 50 meter. So, if it is going uh, in center, so you have a lateral length of 50 meter ok. And the emitter spacing on lateral uh, is the plant spacing. So, the plant spacing is 1.35 right. So, here one plant let us say there is another plant. So, the plant spacing is you know uh, 1.35 three five meter here ok plant plant and the number of emitters per lateral. So, since this is 50 meter right and 1.3 at every 1.3 meter there is a lateral. So, 50 by 1.35 will get 37 la uh, 37 uh, drippers need to be uh, installed on each lateral ok. So, the lateral length is 50 meter and uh, uh, 37 laterals ok. And then now the discharge through one lateral. So, since the discharge through each uh, drip dripper is known right and the number of drippers are known. So, you can estimate the num uh, the amount of discharge uh, really required uh, for each lateral ok. Let us say so q lateral is equal there are 37 uh, drippers right and then uh, uh, sorry, there is a number of emitters for each lateral or 37 and each lateral can emit 4 LPH. So, that will be 148 LPH ok. So, the discharge through each lateral is 148 liter per hour ok. So, then the second step is a number of laterals per manifold ok. So, the now each, uh, so we know the discharge from discharge through each lateral. Now, now we have to find out how many manifolds or how many laterals, how many manifolds, how many laterals for uh, for entire field is required or required. So, the number of laterals here the, since the pump discharge is 2.5 LPS, this is the capacity right 2.5 LPS, this is the pump capacity ok. So, since the pump capacity is 2.5 LPS and then see the uh, discharge through each lateral let us say q 1 and q 2, q 3, q 4 like that. So, several let us say n number of laterals right uh, and the q 1 is the discharge through each, each lateral. So, knowing the capacity and individual lateral you will be knowing how many laterals required. Uh, for this capacity ok for for operate I mean for operating or for, for uh, uh, using this capacity 2.5 LPS. So, the number of laterals that can be operated using uh, this one will be so 9000 divided by 148. So, you just converted into LPH right uh, 2.5 LPS converted into 9000 uh, liter per hour. So, 9000 into 148, so you get 60.81 say 61 ok. So, this is 61 uh, laterals can be operated with the existing system with the existing capacity ok. So, the now yes. so 61 laterals, so with this 2.5 LPS right. So, you can operate 61 laterals right. So, now breadth since the breadth of the field is uh, 100 meter ok. So, since this is 100 meter 
So, breadth of the field is 100 meter. So, number of laterals along the breadth depend on the row spacing. Okay. So, the row spacing the, the uh, this is 1.35 is the plant spacing and the row spacing is uh, 1.5 meter. Okay. So, the distance between two laterals is 1.5 meter and if you can uh, say 100 by 1.5 you get the number of and possible number of laterals you can lay it on one side. Okay. So, let us say. So, let us say number of laterals now uh, on one side will be 100 by 1.5 that is 67 laterals you can lay. Okay. There will be 67 laterals. Okay. So, now the total number of laterals since the two halves 1 and 2. So, the total number of uh, uh, laterals will be 62 into 2 that is 133 total laterals uh, are required uh, for the entire field okay 133 laterals so number of manifolds so suppose in that case uh, what are the number of manifolds so let's say uh, since so one side it is uh, i mean uh, number of manifolds means the manifolds means it's a group of laterals can be operated at once so since we uh, we observe there are 61 laterals can be operated with the existing uh, 2.5 LPS, right? So with the existing uh, well capacity. So uh, since total 133 laterals and the 67 can be operated, so about two sets like four, uh, so we can have 2.2 layouts to cover entire uh, field. So, for that uh, what we since it is uh, uh, it is not an integer. So, let us make uh, a 4. So, because even if you if you take 3 what happens? So, half half and then again the entire field that is a problem right. This is a big uh, big slice versus you know small slices. So, instead of that you can distribute equally like half of these things. Okay. So, now you have 4 fields right, right 4 segments. So, this this field can be covered with one uh, manifold, another manifold, another manifold, another manifold. So, there are four manifolds can be thought of. So, let us say, uh, so since there are four uniform uh, uniformity uh, layout, right, four for uniformity layout. So, the number of laterals per manifolds, right. So, there are 133 manifold, uh, 133 laterals divided by four manifolds, you get 33.25 let us say 34. So, in one manifold that means uh, one piece of land there will be 34 uh, I mean laterals will be operated. Okay. So, if, even if you say 34 uh, you still you have uh, I mean enough capacity to operate 34 you are supposed to operate 67, but you, you are operating 34. So, half of that those will be good. So, so, number of laterals per manifold, so we, we, we what we uh, finalize, we finalize the uh, number of manifolds, these are 4 manifolds and each manifold will have 34 laterals okay. and each lateral is going to uh, have how many, uh, so each manifold, uh, sorry each lateral is going to uh, have uh, so, going to have around uh, 37 emitters. Okay. So, 37 emitters. So, if you see that, um, so 4 manifold, right, 4 manifold, 34 laterals okay, and 37 uh, 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 drippers. Okay. So, let us let us do the, uh, go, go forward. So, now size of the lateral. So, now let us uh, finalize the size of the lateral. The size of the lateral is you can use the uh, uh, Darcy Westbeck equation to find out the friction uh, loss the head loss. So, the head the uh, H1 is equal to K C L Q power m right uh, d power uh, 2 m plus n right. So, let us assume a lateral of uh, 12 mm diameter. Okay, so, let us assume 12 mm diameter. So, then uh, the Q we know okay, 
and uh, q through each, uh, each lateral we know and a because knowing the diameter you can find out the area of cross section and velocity is 72.7 uh, centimeter per second. Now, find out the uh, Reynolds number. So, that is rho dv by mu. So, you get 8704. Okay. So, knowing the uh, Reynolds number, so you can find out the friction factor. So, uh, since it is in between 2000 to uh, 10 power 5, so you have to use the turbulent flow equation right, to compute F. So, that is F is equal to 0.32 nr power minus 0.25. So, uh, knowing the values you will get 0 0.033 that is small f and uh, substitute uh, for in k equation that 0 0.811 to f by g and you get k value 2.73. So, in this in that equation, so uh, this k is known. Okay. So, now the next thing is um, the length. Okay. So, we know the length is uh, 50 meter lateral length, okay. but since we have how many drippers, there are 37 drippers. right? So, you have in this, so there are 37 drippers okay, on this length. So, so the if you are calculating friction head loss through the pipe is not sufficient. So, you know, you see, uh, as I explained in the previous uh, lecture, right. So, there each uh, uh, the dripper will have burp, okay. So, you have to account for uh, the head loss, uh, you have to account the head loss for the uh, each burp, okay. So, how do we get that burp? Uh, so, in this what we do is there are uh, there are some equations or there is a graph we will use to convert each burp. So, based on the, the diameter internal diameter and outer diameter of the burp and, uh, and the thickness of the burp. So, we are going to estimate the corresponding uh, equivalent length okay. and that length will be added to this uh, total length of the uh, uh, lateral. Okay. So, this is the equivalent length of the particular bulb, burp and then the number of emission devices because number of burps number of emission devices. So, that uh, gives the total equivalent length uh, resulted from the 37 burps. So, then how do we get this uh, the C L? So, the C L in the last class uh, we talked about in uh, graph. Okay. So, from that graph if you see sorry. So, if you see this graph, so this one I am talking about. So, knowing the, the diameter of the lateral and emitter connection loss equivalent. So, the C L can be estimated. Okay. So, knowing the diameter and you can estimate the C L. Okay. So, here uh, diameter is given. So, using the particular diameter, right. So, you can uh, because this you consider it is a large one and you get a corresponding thing in feet and the feet will be converted into meters. Okay. So, let us uh, or you can also use the equations here for large a 0 0.91 into d power minus 1.935 you can use. So, based on the, um, the burp diameters or burp uh, specifications. So, this is A and this is B. So, you know these values and the corresponding uh, C L can be estimated with this. Okay. Right. All right. So, from the graph uh, you got, so C L is equal to 0.6 feet okay, uh, which will be equivalent to 0.18. So, that is the equivalent length for a single burp. So, 37 uh, you know uh, these uh, drippers and 0.18 uh, is the uh, equivalent length. So, the total length in order to calculate the friction head loss is 54.86 that is meter. So, now knowing the you know k value, c value, l value and q m n from the graph. Okay. So, then h 1 is known and you can uh, I mean sorry d 1 is known right and you find out 
4.08. Okay. So, h 1 is uh, now it is known. Now, small h 1 which is equal to capital F into h 1 plus m 1, m 1 is a minor losses we let us take it as 0. right? So, f we get it from the again the table. Okay. So, the table if you see let us uh, go a little bit further. Okay. So, this in this table you said so for a particular value of m, so m value right and the number of outlets. So, here for, for the uh, lateral the number of outlets are 37. So, that will be somewhere here right. So, in the corresponding uh, value for that uh, I mean if the corresponding f value the corresponding f value will be 0.347. So, uh, so, like that you have to estimate. Okay. So, let us see now. So, here f into h 1 plus m 1. So, you get 0 0.347 from uh, the table and 4.08 from here and 0 and 1.415 meter. So, and if you see this so, the maximum should be 5 percent of static head. Okay. So, you have um, uh, how much it is a 10 meter right 10 meter is a static head and 5, point, uh, 5 percent is of that. So, that will be you suppose you get you know 0 0.5. Okay. Let me see the, the static head. So, the static head is yeah, that is a 10 meter. Okay. So, the static head is 10 meter and go back to the uh, here. So, uh, we are expecting this head loss to be uh, 0.5 which is a uh, 5 percent is of uh, static head okay, 5 percent of static head. So, since it is high, so what we do we again uh, redo the calculations by increasing uh, because since it is high. So, only thing is you have to if you increase the diameter the friction loss will be less. So, uh, so we have taken uh, I think 20 meter. So, now 20 mm uh, now let us take 16 no sorry 12 mm now increase the diameter 16 mm lateral and redo the stuff. So, calculate uh, velocity from velocity you calculate um, Reynolds number from Reynolds number you calculate uh, small f. Okay. From small f calculate capital K and from capital K okay, so and, uh, and also other values uh, uh, and L capital L. So, the L you get it from uh, the again the graph okay, considering the number of outlets. Okay. So, uh, using everything then you, you put it in the equation and find out uh, uh, h 1 and put it back into the small h 1. And now you see whether that win, that one is the H one is small H one is really uh, less than or equal to the five percent of static head. So we will do the same stuff again uh, by considering the new uh, lateral diameter. If you redo the stuff, of course this is already there. So since uh, uh, so, uh, then you find out n r values. Okay. So, finally, f value you find out. Okay. So, then uh, uh, f value and k value and l value 50 meter into number of emissions C l. So, here a new C l value you got like 0 0.33 feet from the figure and uh, now new l is 54.07 and new h 1 is 1.02. Okay and small h 1 is. So, again you use uh, f value that is 0 0.338 and 1.02. Uh, now, 0 0.35 which is less than 0 0.5 you get and now it is satisfying. So, your uh, diameter of uh, your lateral is 16 mm now okay. and 37 outlets. Now, size of the manifold. So, you finished uh, the lateral part Okay, so, now the manifold. So, the laterals are attached to the manifolds. So, there are four manifolds. So, 
you have to find out what is the discharge in the manifold that is uh, discharge from each letter and the number of letters per manifold that is 148 in 34 that is 50 32 liter per hour. So, that is the total uh, discharge through manifold. So, knowing the total discharge from the manifold uh, ma uh, similar to your lateral uh, I mean design now assume diameter right and uh, find out n r value right a small f k then h 1 ok. So, small h 1 right. So, you got small h 1 is 0 0.22 uh, meter. Now, here the head loss in the manifold is 0 0.21 meter ok. Um, so, now let us go to the next step. Okay. So, head loss at the inlet uh, manifold. So, h uh, due to emitter, h due to lateral, h due to slope h due to manifold ok. So, you have a manifold here which is connected to the uh, sub main right. So, there are several uh, laterals and then the drippers ok. So, now h uh, emitter ok. So, that is uh, uh, 10. So, emitter in the sense uh, so, that is a 10 meter. So, 10 meter is a static head ok. So, then uh, 0 0.35 is the lateral 0 0.18 is a slope right. So, p is 0 0.35 percent of 50 ok 50 meter right. So, 0 0.18 and 0 0.21 is h manifold. So, the total is 10.74 head at the inlet of manifold. So, now size of the main. So, size of the main if you see, so the length of the main uh, is 100 meter ok, because the main is uh, going all the way from uh, this end to this end and these are the manifolds ok. Now, so q main is equal to q manifold because the same amount of discharge needs to be uh, gone to all uh, manifolds. So, you get the same manifold, uh, manifold discharge assume main diameter now 50 mm assume and do the same kind of calculations n r and everything. So, here 4 outlets because 4 manifolds uh, you can get the corresponding f value. So, then h 1 is uh, 0 0.851 ok. So, and then the total head. So, the total head is head at the manifold inlet, head at the main static and local ok. So, manifold inlet 10.74, main 0.851 and uh, static 10 say 2.16. So, total 23.75 meter. So, H local is continued uh, as 10 percent of the other heads. So, that is the local head. So, then uh, so knowing the total head H and the discharge Q. So, you can estimate the horsepower of the pump by using this equation that is gamma h q by 75 into n. So, that will be around 0.63 h p or equivalent to 1 h p. So, that means 1 h p uh, pump is really sufficient to operate the entire manifold right with uh, number of laterals and number of the sprinklers uh, sorry the number of drippers here ok. So, with this the drip irrigation uh, design uh, problem has been completed. So, um, so, the main thing here is so finding out the uh, based on the available capacity ok. So, now you have to find out uh, how many uh, drippers can be operated and with no known amount of uh, uh, discharge from each dripper. And number of laterals can be operated, number of manifolds can be operated and finally, find out the head and the discharge for, for each manifold and knowing these two you can find out the pump required to operate uh, the particular manifold. So, here once you finish one manifold it will go to the next uh, yeah, I mean unit and uh, so, this manifold will be uh, off and the manifold number 2 will be on 
Similarly, once uh, manifold 2 is done, manifold 3 and manifold 4 will be uh, operated simultaneously. Okay. Thank you.